Just hours after the Justice Department announced today that it will stop using private prisons, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton met separately with law enforcement officials in North Carolina and New York, respectively. Trump's message to law enforcement couldn't be more clear. Take a listen. I'm on your side, thousand uh, percent. What you do is incredible. Uh, the risks you take and the danger, and I think it's probably come out more on in the last six months to a year. Sheriff, I would say the last six months to a year, it's come out more the danger of being a policeman than maybe it ever has. Hillary Clinton, in the meantime, uh, who met officials from eight cities, had a more nuanced approach to escalating clashes between police and civilians. Let's take a listen. I believe supporting our police officers and improving policing go hand in hand. Everyone is safer when there is respect for the law and when everyone is respected by the law. So we have a lot of work to do. All right, so which candidate has the right solutions? Joining me now, Lieutenant Steve Rogers and Dan Bongino. Dan, you're remote. I'll start with you first. Uh, I, I kind of know where, where, where you stand on this, but Hillary Clinton met with some really high, highly respected police officers today, and, and she made her pitch as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm frankly stunned that they were willing to be seen in public with Hillary. She is not, I mean, she is totally 100% not a supporter of the cops. She's doing this strictly to get the votes. She's seen a compression in the polls lately, Charles. She's trying to get that rank and file cop vote. But let's just be honest. The modern Democratic Party elected officials, it's, it's the party of chaos. They embrace chaos so they can impose a government solution. That's it. They're not in this for the cops. They're in it for the votes. That's, that's the end of it. She, this is all an act. Steve, why, why did some of these big-time uh, big guys uh, spend time with Hillary today? Well, I'll tell you why Bill Bratton spent time with her. He just got hired by a firm with connections to her and her family. That's number one. And Bill Bratton, who I dearly respected up until this happened, he spent a lifetime putting people connected to criminal enterprises behind bars, and he may have been sitting at a table today with someone, in my view, who may have created the largest criminal enterprise in the history of this country, and that is Hillary Rodham Clinton. That's why he was there. What's the, what's the criminal enterprise? Well, the State Department, being a, a, the, the uh, uh, Secretary of State, and then the Foundation getting favors uh, as a result of her position, to me, that is a criminal enterprise. And that's why I say in my view. And, and are we, the American people, do they think we're so stupid, Charles, that we can't see what's going on here? And look, Bill Bratton served this country, and he served the city of New York very, very well. But I've got to tell you, uh, what he did today, sitting with her at that table, knowing how she feels about police, very, very disappointing. Dan, what about what she said um, about the community, police working together, about some, some form of mutual respect? And, and, in other words, going beyond how, how we feel personally, what do you think the solutions are or will have to be? Yeah, I mean, there's a number of solutions. I think we need to change the way we, we hire in policing right now. We should take the military model where you can have experienced police officers who can come in at the management level and don't necessarily have to work their way up the ranks. But she's just giving sound bites, Charles. That's the problem. Hey, we all need to work together. I mean, what are we going to do next? Like roast marshmallows and make s'mores? You notice she never says anything of substance ever. Again, it just goes back to my point that this to her is all about votes. It's not about substance at all. She, it's all all an act. I was around this woman for a long time as an agent. This is all an act. I promise you. Uh, Steve, Steve, let me ask you the same thing, though, um, because you and I have talked about this, and you like the idea of community policing and those yes. kind of things. Is, is it possible, because the Democrats so often want to have their cake and eat it, too? In other words, they overlook uh, a lot of the root causes of crime. Some people will say their policies end up creating those root causes, that they could ever be in a position to make things better. Charles, community policing is the answer to many of the problems we have in the cities. Donald Trump, for example, he has promoted community policing, and yet he said something very significant. The Democrats have promised so much to so many people and delivered so little. This is why we're in the state we are in today. We need to come together as Democrats and Republicans, and we need to support our police, like he says, and support people in the community, and you do that by supporting community policing methodologies. And also, Danny talked about the economic conditions or connections to crime, and of course, we know uh, you look at a city like Baltimore, the, the big disparity uh, between incomes and a lot of, a lot of, right. I mean, you're going to naturally have this kind of situation. 
Right. The biggest problem in America's inner cities where this tension between the cops and the community exists isn't the cops. It's the Democrats. I mean, that's just the facts, Charles. I mean, there's nearly 100 percent correlation between monopolistic Democratic rule in largely black inner cities and poverty and tension yeah. between the police and the community. It's just the All facts. All right, guys. Let's leave it there. Great stuff. I appreciate it at home. We appreciate you watching every single night. Now, here's the man himself, Lou Dobbs. Keep it right here on Fox Business.